They're guys. They do magic. magic. They are the magic guys. Uh, <laughs> get that microphone, boy. <laughs> Welcome back to hey the- guys, sorry. I, I should expect, specify- I was just trying is, to show Josh how much microphone I can fit in my mouth. <laughs> I should specify this is the Magic Guys podcast, <laughs> not to be confused with the uh, Magic Mike podcast. Mm. I'm Josh Nobito, he's Jason Ma, and we're answering your questions as magicians. Yeah, and seriously, we've got so many questions. Uh, how many so questions many. do we have? At least two. <sighs> yeah. At least you two. guys are wild, eh? But you know, let's talk about some gigs. I did some gi- I actually did some real life gigs last week. It was pretty incredible. Didn't you say that they sucked? You hated them? I'm going to make it up for the podcast. All oh, right. Yeah, sweet, 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 sweet. Um, uh, I also did some gigs. <laughs> and we filmed one of them. Wow. We went out to your Eat Streets. Dude, how laid back is my gig? <laughs> Dude, it, it was pretty chill. It was I'm pretty, pretty lucky, chill. right? Like it's just like go there and like half hazardly doing magic. <laughs> yeah. And and this guy didn't warn me that I approached a table that was actually all of the owners. No, it wasn't all of, of it. It was, one, it was one owner, but like- Even one is still like- There's four owners total. You know, not to put any pressure, but these are the guys that uh, make or break what happens here. <laughs> like, oh. Yeah, literally, um, literally Josh is like, hang on. And I was like, those guys, really? And he's like, yeah. It's like, all right, <laughs> just click. <laughs> I was like, I wondered why they were so well-dressed and, you they know- They were great though, right? Sitting they- there- they're such nice people. Really like nice. you got to meet like John properly now. Yeah. Dude, I love that guy. Dude, and his car was sick. It's fucking like, stupid, right? That That's that car does not belong in the car park of East Street. <laughs> I just know? think it's so funny because he dresses so down. Mm. You know, like, I mean, if you guys have ever seen like an actual rich, but they're like rich people. Yeah. Then there's like actually rich people and actually rich people, they don't wear expensive clothes. So all That's you right. see is this like transformer looking car like and the door's gonna like open up and then he's gonna just hobble out like in his jeans like that was crazy i love it that was I cool love it's him. cool to meet him he's a great meet guy. the squad it was really fun it was uh the videos came out super colorful yeah we're filming another one this weekend good stuff but you won't hear about that till uh two weeks time i guess but for now yeah yeah exactly but it's gonna be good are yeah. we doing it though? Are we go- are we going again? Uh, I would like to Saturday or Sunday. I know you can't do Friday because you've got the Dodgers game, the bullets. Same. Yeah, you got you to dodge those bullets. My, <laughs> my friends down at Tommy Gun's Barbershop. I've done some some stuff with them, and they invited me to their their corporate box at the Bullets game because they they actually have a pop up barbershop at the home games that are in Brisbane because they're like one of the sponsors. Do they do your hair. Well, what's uh, up? Do they do? They have, yeah. Why? What joke no. you got for it? Do you get like seventy five percent off? Because <laughs> I only have seventy five percent of my hair. <laughs> I should <laughs> ask them that. Why are you charging me the same amount as? Why are you charging guy? me full price? I've only got 50 percent of my hair left. <laughs> Decreases every year. Anyway, oh. so let me ask you this though: Do you ever just think about going bald? Well, I don't have to think about it. I'm living it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I wouldn't so, know what that's like, man. I've got a f- forest yeah. on my head. So yeah, look, look. Full disclosure. So my dad, he rocks a uh, a blue mohawk. It's pretty cool. I'll put a photo here if I remember. And he. Well, you will remember because you'll be editing it. He and has you'll hear the, the same, moment where you say, "I'll put a photo here if I remember." That's true. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, there's no way you could forget. We is always what I'm get saying. a little looser by this podcast episode <laughs> that we're filming. No, it's good though because really, like the point of this podcast is to be a, a place to talk about uh, magic, but also to just hang out. Right? Yeah. It's not supposed to be so strict. Totally. You ever watch a podcast where they're super strict? How <laughs> boring is that? Yeah, it, and especially <clears> when they're nervous to like say what they really think and they're like holding it's i'm not holding back at all bro you are going bald (laughs) (laughs) i'm losing my hair at the rate his belly grows it's like it's a very uh synchronous thing (laughs) bro but it's at least yours can be reversed right (laughs) mine just (laughs) disappeared so your patience is thinner than your hairline (laughs) (laughs) that deserves a And welcome back to Josh Nobito's podcast, The Magic Guy. (laughs) Today's episode. Yeah, right. Your podcast. You wouldn't even have any viewers if it weren't for me. Oh, I feel like we're about to fight. Let's do it. (laughs) In today's episode, (laughs) fight. (laughs) No, but for real though, look. What I was going to say was, so my dad, he's really- um, Gangster. He has, yeah, he's really gangster. He's really embraced his receding hairline and just made it a full on mohawk. It's really dope. Um, I my hair recedes the same way, whereas one side slightly more Show receded them. than the other. Now they're listening to this on on Spotify; they they can't see it. So 
Yeah. Right. There's, a, there's a little magic thing that's been invented called finasteride. And basically, so this is this is the, I guess I'll tell the, this whole story because why not, right? So everyone's heard of Ashley and Martin's. It's like the hair regrowth center or whatever. So like- Never heard of them. You wouldn't, I suppose. Yeah, but you said but everyone's heard of them. Everyone who's losing hair has heard of it. Okay, that, <laughs> so yeah, see, that would have helped, yeah. So, so, like, so basically, like, I reckon, it was, <laughs> I reckon it was like five years ago. And uh, so you go to this place, they assess they assess your head, and it's all a Fugazi thing. Like, it's all, it's all like, and I'll tell you why. So you go there, they do this whole thing, and then they're like, all right, cool. So for, uh, it, and it's some crazy amount. They're like, so for $1,000 a month, we can restore your hair in six months. Is that it? Something like that. $1,000 a like, month. And you're like, whoa. Okay, it's, Bro, it's, I'll just it, give you some of mine. Like, it's like, and I, sorry, I think it's over a year. They're like over a year. Like, cause they're like, cause for the first three months you won't see anything happen. Then it'll slowly regenerate. Like it's all this crazy stuff, right? And the only two things that they actually give you is finasteride and this uh, serum that I'm forgetting the name of it's as basically well. basically steroid for your hair <clears> stems. <throat> Yeah, it, it just re re-energizes them, right? <clears throat> so it's like I think it's actually five hundred. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure the first time you go in, they pitch you at a thousand a month. So at the time, I was like, "Wow, that's way too much." So I said no, and then Did like, you go to a, like a growing hair clinic. That's this is. Are you not listening to my story? Yeah, but like I didn't think that you actually. <laughs> I thought you were just talking about them. I didn't realize that you went. Yeah, that's what this story is oh, about. Oh shit! So they're in they're in a spring. Are you self conscious about your hairline? Not now. Okay, but cool. when you're. You know, in Half your 20s, on about it. <laughs> you're like, what the f***? Um, right, there's nothing wrong with, you know, premature baldness. It's cool, man. Yeah, but It's like still. a reptile dysfunction, you know? <laughs> One in five men, it's all good. It? <laughs> so my point is <laughs> they set up this big clinic to make it seem real legit, real professional. So I, at the time I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. A month later they sent me out a, a, a letter going, well, uh, if you come back, we'll do it for half price. I'm like- all right then. They must not be very busy. <laughs> yeah, so so I signed up for half price, which is still a lot of money, right? Five hundred dollars a month, that's a lot of money. But the promise of like, you know, regenerating your hair is, is amazing. Um and then Did what I happens make you is, sign a form that says if your hair doesn't grow back, it's your fault. <laughs> you know, like that whole like cop out. Uh, so what they do do is they try and assess why <laughs> and they do. try to find a reason why you did it wrong or something, like the application Wait, really? or whatever. So, so what happens is it's like a salesman is the person you're seeing first. Once you sign all the paperwork and stuff, then they legally have to get an actual GP doctor to sign off for the finasteride and stuff. So when you go and see the doctor who is in their clinic um, and they're only there on like Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you go and see this GP and then the GP actually gives you the honest truth. So the GP looked at my hair and they're like, oh yeah, you probably great. You know, you probably regain like an inch of your hairline or something. I'm like, only an inch. They told me I'd get like my whole head. Like, no, only like the parts that are, you know, fine will, will get better. I'm like, oh. The parts that aren't sh Okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right, great. And then, so I go on this whole thing for ages. I'm doing this thing. It, it's so annoying. Like you got to use their special shampoos every day. You got to take these, these tablets every day. You got to apply this stuff to your hair every day. Anyway, it like works like a minuscule amount. And then they're like, oh, it's because you weren't applying the, the, the topical treatment. Like, throughout the whole head, like for long enough or made up some stuff. Anyway, so I stopped it. I was like, ah, oh, damn it, stuff it. And then uh, a few months later, like, oh, if you come back, we'll um, we'll give you this, the same thing Do again. Do it for a quarter, a quarter of the price. Yeah, exactly. That No, <laughs> it, it ended up being so cheap. It was like $100 a month in the end. So it went from like 1,000 to down to 100. And that's when I knew there was something wrong. And then what I did was I went to my local doctor and I was like, how much is it to get these ingredients? I was like, how much is it just to get finasteride? And uh, the other thing I'm not remembering. And he's like, oh, it's like 50 bucks. <laughs> um, that'll last you like, you know, all month. I'm like, oh, can I just get that? He's like, yeah, sure. So over the, over the counter. Thing. Yeah. So, cause the, the, yeah, the base ingredient is, is finasteride. You know, you can look it up, but anyway, yeah, you can get it from your doctor and like. So do you still apply it now? Finasteride is a is a small tablet, and what it does is it. Yeah, do you still use it now? Yeah, or? yeah. So is it working? Yeah. So, or well, let me explain. So basically, hair loss in men is attributed to this type of uh, testosterone that causes that to happen. So finasteride blocks that strain of testosterone. That's that why stops you've been emotional hair. lately. Yeah. That's why. Uh, 
<laughs> getting in touch with my feelings. <laughs> by, ta- by taking that, it, it stops that process. So mm-hmm. basically like it won't regrow your hair, but it will stop like any further degeneration or whatever. Anyway, anyway, this is really not magical topics, but I and suppose- And that is how you do a double lift, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So really all you have to do is get finaster of whatever the hell it's called and yeah. have a receding hairline. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. But but am I self-conscious about it? Not really, but if I can help it, you know, I will for the it, sake of being on stage and stuff. I got to like, say, yeah, it's got to be a little bit un- unhelpful to have like a close friend who constantly keeps ripping you on it. <laughs> so I'll stop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we've gone through that. What was that last question we had? How do you deal with hecklers? <laughs> how you yeah, how do, you, how do you deal with hecklers? You punch them in the throat. You invite them to uh, do a podcast with you. You know what? <laughs> this but is you, perfect. I invited you. Okay, this well. is perfect for our next question. So, um, overseer Bob asks, he says, "What do you do if you have a receding hairline?" All right, so basically, what you do is he says, "Who rides whose coat's tails in the in this relationship?" <laughs> <laughs> Who rides whose coattails in this relationship? It's a good question. That is a good question. You know what I think? I think you ride my coattails in terms of the online stuff. But I think I ride your coattails in terms of the business stuff. Makes sense? Like, I think 100% you're way more business savvy than me. <laughs> Let's, Go on. Let's Tell me fight. more about how great I am. <laughs> no, but then like your no, pers- you're right. but your personality sucks. Mine's great. So. Mm. No, I'm mm. just, no, just kidding. No, I don't know. Look, honestly, I think Each that we have a really own. I think we have a really powerful like give take relationship, which is good. Yeah, we both stand on our own two feet, but we both give advice where we can give advice. Not yeah, not only that, it's That's like it's incredibly different too. Like my mm. my field of skill i don't know i don't really know what to call it my my area of expertise is totally different to his which is great mm. it just means that like there's yeah like a really good give take dynamic i guess yeah yeah so there you go bob so i got <laughs> yeah bob you some bitch <laughs> meanwhile right. bob there trying to ride on our coattails with his questions <laughs> all right ragav has another question love this guy wanted he someone in the competition right yeah Hell yeah. I wonder if he's got the card yet. Comment below, Ragav, if you've uh, received your sweet Dynamo playing card. Recede. Receded, yeah. If your hair is receded <laughs> that I, from um, the Dynamo playing card. But he just entered in, just so you guys know if you're interested in checking it out, he just entered it in uh, online competition, mm. 1v1 magic competition, okay. which is kind of cool. So um, definitely check it out. Anyway, let's, Sick. let's keep going. So he asked, wanted some advice on how you develop your pattern for different situations. Are there any advice? Oh, this is interesting. This would imply that you use a script. So <clears throat> I don't use scripts. Do you use scripts? I use like bullet points, I would say. I know what I want to say and how I get there though is always different. But for each routine you do, there is – a framework already, right? That's what and I mean, bullet you, points. Yeah. What he's saying is, yeah, how do you switch it up depending on what's happening around you, I suppose. So, so yeah, <laughs> so that would be that would be coming down to how you script. Yeah. So if you hard script, because there are people who like hard script, like a story, like yeah. they, they make like a story and that's fine. Like David it, Regal is a good example. Yeah, as he, soon as you throw something at them, though, sometimes they don't, we can throw them off the rhythm. Okay. That makes sense. But yeah. Except for David Regal, he's a god. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I heard, you know what, I was hanging out with some magicians online the other day and uh, my buddy Nick Casitas from Melbourne, he said something interesting, which was there was a younger or less experienced magician hanging out with him and he's like, Nick asked him about scripting. He said, oh, so, you know, what have you written down for this routine? He's like, oh, I don't script my magic. I just, you know, I thought I'd just go off the cuff like you do because that's what you do. And Nick said, bro, you have not been doing magic long enough to be able to rely on riffing what you're doing and saying. Like you got to be a bit longer before you can just start <laughs> not, you know, putting time into your pattern stuff because you've got to build up that ammo. So I think. Yeah, you definitely do need arrows in the quiver. That's what uh, yeah. James used to call it, arrows in the quiver. Once nice. you get enough like uh, like quick lines, mm. I guess, yeah, you just uh, all of a sudden then you can start making stuff up because you have well-rehearsed scripts. Yeah. You know, in the backlog, I guess. I, I think like I don't have, apart from my keynote, which I have written down <laughs> word for word, and then you stray from it tiny bits throughout the, the, the presentation. It's a good keynote, by the way. Thanks. <laughs> for my magic, like I can't say I've written down patter, but definitely through trial and error of doing street magic and performing it at gigs, 
a patter somewhat forms that's yeah. uh, not written down, but it's just a thing. Like you found the the well oiled way of delivering the routine, and that just comes from doing it a, a ton, um, doing it lots, see what works, and then. I guess you just have to be present in the moment. Would you agree? Like to be able to adapt it to for a situation. For close up hundred percent. For yeah. stage as well, actually. Yeah. You just got to be in the moment. So you know what, what things you can use to your advantage. Plus like, you know, you want to just, I always say this all the time, but you just want to really push your personality, hmm. you know, like, so having a natural response to something as opposed to a scripted response is so much better. And the hard thing with anything is making it seem like it's the first time you're saying it. You know, yes, that's, that's what that, makes, that comes with time. Though. That's what makes actors so good is they can like they can do another take of something and it still feel like it's not scripted. You know, they say actors make the best magicians. They they do say that. Mm-hmm. You know what else they say? What I don't know. I was hoping you'd know. <laughs> Should we talk about these cups now? We we're going to talk about this live now and figure this out. We really want to get these out to people. I think maybe should people just email us in, like. What what, what what I huh? email their orders? Maybe what I could do is should we sign the cups without maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, perhaps I'll put a link below that will go to my website and it'll be a form. Your website. We can do it to yours if if you can actually my website. You'll do it. Will you do Why it? Why don't we do it to the magic guy's website? Because we don't have one. Oh yeah. <laughs> so okay, let's just do it to your website. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll make a private uh, a private page on my website. So I'll put the link below. That will have a form so that way you can fill out your details if you do want one. And it will include like your address where you live and stuff. You can tell us if you want it signed, if you want Josh to send you some nudes with it. If like, you want no, Jason you want. to drink from it first. Um, <laughs> and Lick the rim. That way. Lick- whoa. <laughs> That that way, I'm glad you put some comedy in there. That way, I can I can reply with what the shipping cost would be, and then that way, if you want to still buy for some reason, you can for then, some reason you can send it to our PayPal. So our products are premium. Totally, this sh- will be worth more than Supreme soon. You'll see. This is a cool cup. Is a cool ass cup. Underneath the cup is it's a white, mug. so we could actually sign the underneath. And we're also going to put a reveal in the ne- in the design as well for you guys. Apparently, yeah, of course. <laughs> on the bottom here where it says Josh sucks. Why would you put that on the cup? Well, you know, I wanted to be humble. No, but on the bottom we can put like an Ace of Spades or something. That'd be cool. If you figure out how to do that, that'd be great. I do know so, how to do it. Um, I'll put a link below this a video or this podcast <laughs> episode. <laughs> um, yeah, fill out your details. We're going to just make them to order. So however many people are interested – it only takes about a week to get them made so we can get a made ship them out to you guys. So we can share a fellow drink with our fellow uh, watchers. I think that- A what? fellow drink yeah. with our fellow watchers. So we can share a beverage Gino with our fellow yeah. magish delish. What do you think? Is that a good way of doing this? Yeah, I think it's, pro- it's probably the best line? way. No, I think it's probably the best way. We don't want to like uh, mass produce these things. These are- it's like a personal thing. Like, you know, you yeah. order it, you want it to be signed, you send you a little letter, you know, that sort of stuff. For sure. And I think what we'll do is this order will be the only time it comes like this. I think from here on out, if we ever do it again, it'll be a different color or a different, slightly different. So that way these stay like exclusive to the original. Oh, geez. These are the V1s. The v- <laughs> <laughs> Liquid fluor V1s. Oh. That's right. It's pretty cool. That LF, is pretty cool. LFV1. Did you write that one yourself? Nice. Just came up with it. It wasn't even part wow. of my patter. Wow. Yeah. But like we were saying, uh-huh. Rakov, now <laughs> that's a tough one to deal with hecklers when they burp. <laughs> what do you do when they burp? How are you going to edit that? <laughs> Turn it up. <laughs> what do uh, I do when they burp? Nothing. Just keep going. Maybe burp back. <laughs> <laughs> burp back. <laughs> you think that was a burp? This is a burp. That's not a burp. Whoa. This is a It's like. <laughs> you know, like throat singing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Wah. But it's a burp, you know. Imagine. Oh, <laughs> anyway. Right. So anyway, um, wow. so your hairline's receding. That must be wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must man. be crazy. You know, man. you can't have everything in life. You know, sometimes it just looks like you're moving really fast. Your hair can't keep up. <laughs> Explain what I go like this. And then <laughs> half the hair moves over. <laughs> That's funny. Uh.
Uh, that must mean I'm moving so slow that my hair's growing too much. What? <laughs> Damn it. That's why I'm fat. I don't move enough. Uh, <laughs> you know what this means now? Tell me. The thumbnail for this video has to be your hair like draped over my head. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for you, I washed it this morning too. So it's oh, thank God. <laughs> minty fresh. <laughs> oh, wow. You know what I like about having long hair? Nothing. I'm actually thinking about cutting it all off. <laughs> Just of late. You know, when I was younger, in my younger years, it was cool, right? Having mm. long hair was cool. Was now, it? yeah, yeah, I had a lot of uh, cool moments with this hair. Okay. One time I whipped Yuki in the face with it. <laughs> and then that. she whipped it back. Yeah, she used yeah. to have whipping competitions. <laughs> <laughs> with my What do you want, hair. woman? Whoosh. What do you want, want a woman? <laughs> so, hey, you talk to your woman. What do you want, woman? Yeah. <laughs> do you want some oh, wait, food? You can't do it. You're like, what do you want, woman? <laughs> I can tell you this is what happens at Jason's house. She goes, Jason son, do you want some food? And he goes, Tabitaino. Tabitaino? <laughs> what? Tabitaino des, isn't that the uh, thing? Oh, so close. I'm full. You're getting it. No, on a kite bite is I'm full. What? Well, what was I saying? You, you were, taught me. You how were to saying say. like want to eat almost. You were like I was like, eat eat, like you want to eat. Like, hmm. It's like it doesn't really make sense what you're saying, but you know, whatever. Okay. Who cares, man? It's whatever. It's, Speaking Japanese, oh yeah, I'm talking Japanese, oh yeah, he thinks so. Da, na, 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 na. You racist? No, my no. wife you're talking about, song. bro. <laughs> Am I wrong? I don't know. She speaks Japanese? No, she doesn't. She speaks Korean and Japanese and English. Wow. She's a talented smart girl. lady. She is. She's very smart. Yeah. Very beautiful too. Um, How you landed her, man. So if, you, if any of you women watching this thought maybe you'd have a shot with me, <laughs> consider this your like hell nah card, all right? <laughs> no, wait, we should rephrase that. If any of you women are watching this. Any of you are? <laughs> There's definitely not many. <laughs> I think we got one, Justine. Yeah, and, and, our, and our lovely friend from, I forget which country she's in, but she knits while she watches yeah, yeah, that yeah. podcast. She's we awesome got two, too. Yeah, we got like two. Yeah. Gutsy. Gutsy. Yeah. Yeah. So- Oh, we a bit got, controversial. Oh, we Dominique as well. Dominic Miles. <laughs> yeah. From South Africa. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You're not from Australia. You're automatically a woman. No, you know what? Bit of knowledge here. He, even though all these questions come in and he says from South Africa, he's actually living in Perth at the moment. Oh, shit. Let's go visit him. Playing cricket for the uh, university there. Bro, Playing cricket, living him. with his dad. Let's just fly down to Perth. Yeah. Bro, we're coming. We're coming, Dom. Um, I was going to also say a bit of controversial news at the moment. People have been going crazy about the stock market. Have you been watching this crazy yeah, stuff? Doge coin and stuff. Doge so, coin. Doge, 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 doge. Whoop, 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 anyway, yeah. Whoop. So yeah. So one of the one of the companies that are really um, in the news at the moment is. Did you Doge. invest in Dogecoin? No. Do you know anything about Dogecoin? I've heard of Stonk. Stonks. Yeah, no. Stonks is <laughs> Stonks is when they're like it's like a meme about like stocks. Like oh. you've got to invest in stonks. Stonks, baby. It's like strong stocks. One of the companies in the news about the stocks is GameStop. Yeah. Which formerly in Australia is still called Electronics Boutique or EB Games. And funnily enough, I did an event for EB Games last week. And they paid them in stock. Not knowing. Yeah, I'm still waiting to get paid actually. Really? Actually. Really? Actually? <laughs> yeah. How long ago? Well, no. Well, this is through our, our buddy Jason Gray. <laughs> so- he was the one interacting with the client. So I've sent my invoice. Haven't been paid yet, Jace, but that's okay. Um, Dude, so get, get it together, man. He's got to pay for his hair treatment. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't cheap blocking this testosterone. Um, <laughs> but yeah, fun, it was weird because I, I had no idea about the connection. I didn't know GameStop is EB Games. In the US, obviously, they changed the name. But yeah, I did this big event. It was like 400 people of their staff. And then I hear after putting out the vlog, um, one of my buddies watching it said, oh, it's funny that you did a gig for them. They're you know, massively in the news right now. <laughs> I was like, okay. In a good way? No, no, no. Something about their stocks going down. Uh, no, because the, the whole thing was like these um, apps like Robinhood and stuff, these trading apps blocking people from getting certain stocks which affected the market. Yeah, it's because they couldn't uh, keep up with demand. Like, have you seen the silver demand at the moment? <laughs> oh, man, so many people started investing in silver, they can't keep up anymore. They're like, oh, yeah, dude, right. we don't have that many stocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Look, yeah, I haven't kept up so much with the manipulating the market. And Andre Jake put out a great video about explaining it. That might explain it a little bit better. But all I know is I did a gig for this company that is being talked about a lot right now. But at the same time, it didn't help 
my YouTube search algorithm, you know, by <laughs> by having them in my vlog. But I did that event. Now, what is weird? Yeah, that's the reason why your video didn't get many views. That is the that's, exact reason. That's the reason, yeah. So I have never been heckled by a group of nerds before. That was a first. No way. Did they heckle you? I was heckled by gamer nerds. Um, not at every Was it table. like this whole like, like I'm smarter than you kind of mentality? Do they have this like attitude almost? A little bit. Dude, the gamers, man. The is. It was crazy. No, like, <laughs> like <laughs> not all gamers, but like there, there are definitely some. It's you know what? It's the D and D kids. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But it, it was I'm a really nerd. I'm a massive like, nerd because <laughs> I, I was thinking, all right, great. These guys spend their whole lives around games and you know make believe and and really cool, you know Fortnite make all that believe. stuff. And I'm like, this is going to be great. Just Them straight seeing trivialize an entire magic. genre of people. <laughs> Is D and D not just make believe? No, brother, it's real. Dragons are real. You ever rolled a natural twenty in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Only when I roll this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's funny. I had to cut a very funny joke. Just no, I just leave it. Leave it in. Who cares? It's funny. It's funny. It's just funny. But <laughs> so I was like, these guys deal with magic all the time. Seeing a wizard in real life has got to be cool. And it was for a lot of people. But then there were just some groups, they got together, they're feeling a bit cocky. And then they were like, all right, do magic for us. And I'm doing magic. Oh, yeah, do magic. You that. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, and that's not really good. Ah, ah. But, uh, it's a double lift. The, but I, but I got to give you generic magic terms. No, they, they weren't throwing out methods. They okay. were just throwing out like, you know, oh, I knew the card would be on the top or whatever. And then, of course, it's never what they say is going to happen. Um, and my favorite thing to do is where the card ends up in your mouth, but they're burning your hands, like heckling you about the deck while, meantime, everyone's watching you show them up. Love it. Yeah, you just sit there, middle of COVID, uh, put a card in your mouth. Like, yeah, fuck, funny. Oh, I do on my forehead now because Good boy. it sticks to my head, but... Yeah, the other event. You don't have any hair to get in the way. No, that's right. It's easy. <laughs> I can't do that one. It's easy <laughs> being breezy. The other. Gig Is it that cooler I got, up there? It, it gets cold. Do yeah. the curtains match the drapes? <laughs> are you as bored <laughs> downstairs as you are upstairs? <laughs> Bro, why are you saving this for the Patreon? Because this is so <laughs> up. <laughs> now, that's look, right. my pubes definitely aren't receding. Well, right? On the plus side, though, you know, they know what they know that the Patreon's full of fun now. See, now they're going to all subscribe to the Patreon. Ah, yep. It's called strategy. Nice. It's like rolling a perfect 20, a natural 20 in D&D. Talking the good stuff. <laughs> so I got to do one other event and it was for D &D a before? client that I hadn't been to. You ever played D&D before? Never. Really? Really. Dude, it's fun. I was too busy practicing my I was magic. too busy having sex. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. You're getting laid. <laughs> no, no. I, I wish. No, for no, no, real though, it's a lot of fun though. No, you can practice magic while playing. It's good. Great. Look, p friends who play in... Yeah, let us know if you play D and D or anything like that. I want to know because I actually mm. enjoy it. I yeah, what's it like? Is I'm it a fun? massive. Do you have a life? Player. You know, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> now, my my sister. Plays I'm a massive Yu-Gi-Oh player. I love playing like card games and shit, like Magic the Gathering and mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you know? See, Josh doesn't get it though because Josh is whipped. I don't even reckon you'd be allowed to have a PlayStation in this house. Sandy, it have you. She'd shave the rest of your head. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I wish we had it. We should have had a whip sound on here. <laughs> oh, we need that. Yeah. In, yeah. Install that. Get rid of this one. <laughs> we never use this. Get rid of that. <laughs> That's true. Put a whip sound in. That's true. Anyway, <laughs> I got to do two events. One was for EB Games and the other one was for one of my longest running clients. There's a client that's booked me like at least over the last five, six years. One of my first gigs I remember doing was for this charity event and it was a poker night. I did magic. And then through that, I met this one couple. Mm -hmm. They booked me for their housewarming. And then at their housewarming, their friends then booked me for their 35th birthday at the time. And then these two couples over the last seven years have booked me multiple times and seen my shows. And it's been really crazy. So, so this lady booked me for her 40th. And she had this really cool carnival, carnival, <laughs> carnival theme. Really went all out. Had it at a venue. Had popcorn machines. Had like all this stuff going on. 
everyone dressed up, felt really cool. It felt like even though I was dressed up in a suit, I felt underdressed because I wasn't like in a jester outfit or, you know, being a real looking wizard. What are you talking about? You look like a clown all the time. Thank you. Aren't you going to hit the... Nope, don't need to. Good. Joke writes itself. Thank you, bro. Thank you, brother. Anyway. <laughs> so upset. It was a very fun night. Um, what can I say? What what uh, what was the most interesting for me is like how many friends she has. Like, <laughs> because I, I look at it myself. Like, I don't know that if I had a birthday that I could have a hundred people turn up that all like actually you need. Get at least like three. At least three. So I would get a discount because it would be a much smaller room probably. <laughs> but he- hearing all the speeches and like how much they've, you know, affected each other's lives how and how much again? they can. 40, 40. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's got, you know, two years on you. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's got like more time to get friends, man. You've been too busy, you know, not playing D&D. No, but that's. You'd have a bigger social <clears throat> circle if you played D&D. Would I? Hell yeah. Great. It's a tight knit circle of friends. Bro, let's play some D and D. nuts. No, D and D's nuts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. God damn it! It's quite funny. Anyway, um, anyway, it was cool to see how many friends and family she had that cared about her, and you know, had come to see her on that night. Anyway, and, like, blah blah blah. You did a gig, and- Josh. What else you got going on? Well, since that gig, it's uh. Crickets, I get it. Nice. Can't I play the sound? It doesn't end though. It plays forever. But can't I play it until I want to turn it off? <laughs> See, this is what friendship is about, my friends. It's not about getting along. It's about pissing each other off and still continuing with the podcast because we've committed. Do you really get that angry? <laughs> not really. <laughs> you know, the other day <laughs> I asked Josh, I was like, what have you been doing to keep busy? <laughs> and he took, <laughs> he took it as me being passive aggressive, being like... You Make time to make uh, content. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to resend your message. I'm like, no, 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 I just meant, you know. In general. In general, like, what do you do with your week? I'm like, oh, so not passive aggressively. Well, I, I thought uh, that was pretty funny. Myself. I thought that was freaking hilarious. Yeah. Do you think I'm some kind of like content fiend or something? Like- no, well, before it, you said, bro, do you want to go shoot content? I was like, oh, maybe on the weekend. And you're like, oh, bro, what do you do with your week? And I was like, well, and I like went to justify myself. And he's like, no, I just mean. In general, like, what are you doing this week? I'm like, ah, oh, oh, so yeah. not spending not, time with not my, a shot at me. Spending time with my girl and yeah. playing D and D. Bro, you're gonna hit that natural twenty, I believe in you. Uh, Let me. <laughs> thanks. I would love to know what that even means, eh? Hey? Like, natural twenty. Sure so you good. get a twenty sided die and you roll. What? It and you get, yeah, it's twenty sided dice. There's a twenty sided dice. Did you seriously not know that? Is it like a golf ball or something? Are you serious? Did you not know this? How is there a twenty sided die? You're kidding me. It's like hexagonal type of thing. <laughs> yeah. So it has six. Hexag. What? <laughs> hexagon has six sides. I said it's like it's like hexagonal. Like it, like the shape is kind of like all. Like- That's why I mentioned like, is it like a golf ball <laughs> with just tiny little divots <laughs> kinda, all the way around? Kind of, yeah, kind of. But it's, you know, it's only 20 divots, obviously. This is blowing my mind. I can't believe you didn't know there was a 20-sided dice. Oh. You know, like for someone who like criticizes nerds so much, you practice magic all the time. You literally are the definition of a nerd and you mm. don't know what a 20-sided die is. No, because too stressed out about that receding hairline to think about anything else. <laughs> Clearly. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know, I love you. <laughs> but no, seriously, yeah, it's a 20-sided die. So I hope you enjoyed the last episode of The Magic Guys. There's it's an been eight-sided great. dice <laughs> as well. Okay. That I could grasp, How? adding two extra sides. Adding two extra <clears> sides. <throat> to a six normal die. Why don't they use them at the casino, a, a 20-sided die? Instead of roulette, where it spins around, they could just flip this 20-sided dice. Yeah, just get like a 50-sided die and just roll it. <laughs> yeah. You can, get a, you can get a three-sided die. Crazy, right? This is all very interesting content. It is. Though it's funny that you don't know this stuff. What about a one sided die? Just be a coin. No, because that would be a two sided die. Mm. <laughs> um, no, you can get like you can get like all kinds of different sided dies. Okay. Yeah. Well now that we've got that sorted. <laughs> I, can't believe, I can't believe you didn't know this. Anyway, look, here's something for you. On on the topic of dice, mm. I was recently given something from a friend. 
Um, he <laughs> ordered it and then ended up getting two for some reason. But have you know you know the dice of men? Again, no. <laughs> it's a Tom Stone magic trick. Okay. So it's basically uh, it's basically like you have a bunch of options. Oh, it's different ways to greet people. Gotcha. You know you know the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not his trick, but he brought out his that, version. The dice using of the men. Dice. Okay. So how you know how do you know it's not his trick? Because it's been done before he was doing it. By who? Your mum. That's what I thought. You don't know anything. You don't know anything about dice. You don't know anything about rim shots. <laughs> it sounds so weird. <laughs> this says rim shot on here. <laughs> Is that what it's actually called? Yeah, that? the drum <laughs> rim shot. Because it just sounds very <laughs> sus. Because when you hit that end, it's just by hitting the rim of it. Like the, the stick goes on their edge, which is called the rim. <laughs> What about you, bro? You ever hit the rim? <laughs> In basketball. I like how you're like hiding your face behind the microphone. <laughs> so sus. What is happening? No, but for real, is there anything else been going on, man? You got some plans now? Well, I talked about my gigs. Tell us about you. Well, my gigs have been mostly each streets of late. So good. Pretty good. Great. <laughs> No, nah, it's been weird. And instead of doing shows at this, because I normally do shows at the e I've just been doing close-up, which, which has been fun. It has been fun, but it's also been strange <clears throat> because it's such a big venue, right? Like, you know, it's like the rule is like one magician per 100 people typically. That's mm. typically the rule. Yeah. So, I, so in this place, it's one close-up magician per 10,000 people. Mm. Which <laughs> means you never run out of people to perform That's, to over that time. That is very true. But it always it almost feels like I'm not entertaining enough people. Does that make sense? I always feel like I'm not doing enough. It mm. kind of annoys me. And a comment you made was that you felt it's it's hard starting from ground zero for every group. Well, it just feels like, yeah, it feels like, well, because when you go to like a gig, so like you were saying this 40th, mm. there's 100 people roughly, you said. So I imagine that when you went there and you did a trick, and that group goes crazy. Wah! All of a sudden, onlookers, because there's only 100 people there, onlookers would go, oh, shit, this guy's doing some stuff. That's cool as. Maybe, I mean, then when you approach them, it's like, oh, we saw you with that group. Kind here. of, kind of. It, it, for some, yes. But if you're at a corporate event, normally no, because they're all so self-centered, like in their own world, <laughs> that that's not the case. And but you it's have also, to win them over every time. But it's also an environment, though, where I'm sure that they're aware that you're there. But the Eat Street Markets, because it's such a big place. Again, kind of. Yeah. I, like I know what you were saying. Like every single person has enough. Like has no idea what that but, you're there. But, but yeah. But also like it's a. <clears throat> it's kind of weird because they're like eating food at this place where they've paid to eat this food. So like you know at a corporate event they go and they do. Uh, it's like a party, right? So the food's paid for and stuff like that. Typically, typically, obviously, it's not set in stone but at this place this is like it's like walking into a food court yeah it's the public yeah no no it's like walking into a food court and then walking up to a table and saying hey can i show you some magic <laughs> mm. and there's just this like awkward moment where they're like oh shit is he gonna ask for money or something like you yeah. know like is he doing this for tips or some shit you know well i had just- you know i had my restaurant gig at brothers for three years which was very much like that Right. Okay, yeah. So then that makes sense. Approaching a restaurant or oh, a Jade Buddha, you know, we, you know, we've done all these sorts of these sorts of environments. But I, I have always said, like, doing restaurant magic is the most unorganic setting for magic because yeah. you're interrupting them while they're eating. They're sitting at the table while you're here, and it's like they want to eat, but like now they got to watch you, or like you're performing, and then their food gets served. It's really not a great place to enjoy or magic. The dreaded entree, mother show up every time. <laughs> All right, pick a card. Hey, do you guys want tiny little hot dogs? Bit, yeah. You just asked them. You just asked them two seconds ago. Yeah. What are you doing with your life? You need to offer them tiny hot dogs again. Man, <laughs> oh, I think we talked about that. That rage. I think I raged on about that a little bit yeah. and how I combat it. But Dude, I remember still, filming uh, you at some of your gigs yeah. and every it time happens. it got to the point where I was like, ah, oh, right on cue. <laughs> Josh are, is about to do the revelation. In come the tiny hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> it's happened with you and also twice with my normal videographer Shaq Studios where I've just looked at the camera and gone great content at the exact moment that the waitress has interrupted us it's great it's like they I swear it's like they do it and they do it on purpose they're like oh the magician oh, quick quick get me a platter of food <laughs> I'm the alpha you're in our venue get me a platter of food the magician's doing magic Arantino ball anyone 
It's got that stupid, you know, crab claw hanging out the top. Son, <laughs> oh, I hate that. Uh, it's, like yeah. it's, it's like it's doing this out of the ball. <laughs> so how long do you think until you can start doing shows there again? Uh, just until COVID eases up a bit more. The issue is that um, my shows have people standing typically. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense is it in the setting there? so I know what standing is, yeah. No, no, but the <laughs> – <laughs> Well, you didn't know what a 20-sided dice was. So <laughs> so anyway, look, it's uh, – yeah, so the, the problem is that you can have gatherings of people in venues and stuff when they're seated, it's fine, but when they're standing, it's weird. The, the rules are a bit weird on that. So you have to, like, do close-up, <laughs> mm. which I think is worse in my opinion because you're going, what if I had COVID? I'm just going table to table, spreading it one group True. at a time. <laughs> yeah. Would they get you to do a show on the stage instead? Would you do a show on the stage? Um, I don't know, man. Like I've thought about it. It's. Do you remember that story you told me about um, how you you told them as well, actually, where you went to this gig and you were supposed to do a stage show, but no one was really paying attention to you and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like that at this place. Like mm. you're not, you know, I'd have to try and attract this attention from people who are, you know, di- like typically listening to you know, background music yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. You no, know? I, and then you're 100% trying, to, right. trying to do a, like a magic show of all things. That's that requires why, concentration. That's why G'd up do so well because you can passively listen. Yeah, you and can watch listen to them or you can watch them. Yeah. You can eat and still be hearing what they're saying. But magic, you have to be totally <laughs> tuned in to what they're saying. You have to concentrate, yeah. So it's a bit weird. So mm. no, I probably I probably wouldn't. Uh, mm. They have they have thought about like, they're like, oh, what if you did something on the stage? And yeah. every single time I'm like, I could do something. And then every single time I'm there, I look at that stage and I look at the people <laughs> and I go, this would just be so, it would be the <laughs> magic show. And the the other thing that's bad is it has the dance floor of death as well. Like there's such a massive gap between the actual tables and the stage. Yeah. So you'd have to be like, hey, if I could get a volunteer up here, yeah. anyone want to volunteer? And it's like <laughs> in the distance. I will. <laughs> right, which one of you said that? <laughs> yeah. Could I just get you to raise your hand yeah. and then five people raise their hand. You're just like. Fuck. All right. All right. In five minutes when they've made it to the stage, we'll do a magic trick. Yeah, they're like walking, sifting through the crowd and you're just like, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause as this person joins me on the stage. Ah, oh, man. Keep clapping, everybody. Yeah. They're getting there slowly. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just not – I don't oh, think boy. it's the right setting for magic. <clears throat> That's why they like the street style show that I do there because it means I get to build this crowd nice and close and then piss them off and then get the next crowd. Fuck it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and it works really well, but you know, we can't have people standing in groups, so it's a bit uh, annoying. But you know, that'll it'll come back. And then when it does, oh, your boy Jason's gonna be getting paid four times. Oh boy. Oh, this is a good question. All right. So let's end with Sigmundo's question. He's one of our fellow patrons, and he says, Which YouTubers would you want to cross over with and what type of content would you do with them? All right, Josh, you go first. I want to know. Obviously me, number one. Yeah. All right, I'll help you out. Sure. Nice. Well, last year I did do a collaboration with a videographer, which was sick. And uh, the way I did that was I went on to the Facebook community. I found like Brisbane YouTubers. I know, I, you're in that group too, right? And uh, I just commented. I was like, I'm in Brisbane. Who would want to do a collab? He reached out. It was, it was really fun. Um on a side note, have you seen <laughs> – I don't want to, like, trash talk, actually. <laughs> what, my hair receding? No. <laughs> Another ball. No, it's talking about – you know, have you seen this chick? Um, she's, like, a hippie like, hippie girl, and she always posts, like, oh, today I'm going to be giving tips on a happier life. Hmm. And then you watch the video, and it's literally a 10-minute straight – Wow. Ten, no edits, nothing. 10-minute straight clip of her, like – talking but it's like there's no value it's just like it's just rambling and it's so mm. it's just so weird because she constantly posts in this group every time she uploads a video she posts in this group right and then it's like you just see it. and it's just <laughs> so hard to watch as i try to watch people's videos as well and yeah. give honest feedback like I, you know because obviously i want that as well i want people to tell me what's up with my videos, like, you know, something better you could do here and here. But, you know, so I watch other people's videos. So there was another one with this guy who was who posted a thing and he's like, oh, we went up to Mount Isa and we smashed some pots and stuff like that. And literally the video is really 
poorly shot people smashing cups. Like <laughs> it's really interesting, isn't it? Like, <laughs> like it's just like, come on, man! Like you can't just smash cups and of, expect to become YouTube famous or and something. Like, my the thing I see a lot in that Facebook community is people posting saying, "Anyone got tips on how to get more subscribers or more views?" My channel's been going for six months, and I'm just wondering what tips should I be doing to grow it? And it's like, make yeah. good content, you idiot. Yeah, you know? there's, yeah, it's, it's just like, weird. Not idiot, but oh, the, there, the, there's other, no- the other one is where they say like, uh, mm. oh, if you sub to me, I'll sub back. <laughs> I hate that. A sub, sub for, for sub. sub, sub for sub. Sub for sub. <laughs> should we get Subway after this? We should actually. After I feel like eating sub a, talk. I feel like eating some meatballs. <laughs> Thanks for listening. It's time for us to disappear now. Disappear now. But we'll see you again on the next episode of The Magic Guys.